The life and story of an Alaskan king salmon is remarkably fascinating. From the time they leave their birth river as zero to one year old fish, to the time they come back as four to seven year olds, little to nothing is known about where they go, what they do, and how they behave in the North Pacific. The 150 mile long life sacrificing journey back to the home river to reproduce is truly nature at its finest. 150 miles up some of the gnarliest, fastest, largest, dirtiest rivers most have ever seen until they reach their inland home, pristine rivers formed by glacial runoff. Coincidentally enough, however, home is a guaranteed death sentence, but it all makes sense. Once they spawn and die, carcasses have been shown to assist in the development and overall survival of newly hatched salmon by contributing nitrogen and phosphorus compounds to the river. A true circle of life. From saltwater to freshwater and life to death, this is one fish that has our utmost respect. So this is our King Salmon Rig, we use this every day. I run a couple of hooks with a corky float, a little bit of flash, and some cured salmon eggs on the back. So what that does, it'll run about a foot and a half. Looks, this one looks like two feet, probably off the bottom. And up here at the top, I run a 120 pound grade swivel uh, with a long tag end and a polymer knot. And then it's just quarter inch hollow core. And that's what we feel bounce down the bottom all day. You know, it's being connected to the bottom. It's feeling every rock, knowing every slot that you're bouncing through. And then anything different than that, a bump, a stop, um, a real hard bite, um, it's super imperative to be quick on this stuff when you get a bite. These fish don't hold on to it. It's not like a walleye where they just sit there and chew on it. It's super quick. And so it's up to us to really hammer on them and give them a good hook set. So I've been coming up here since 2006. Um, I was kind of on the five year plan in college. And my dad said, if I get done in four years, we can go fishing wherever I want. So I took some summer school, I took some spring semesters, some winter courses, and busted it out. So we came up here on vacation and just hammered on some kings, and it was life-changing for me. I had a sales job out of college after that, and the next year I got a call from one of the guys we were with, said he couldn't come up, he had summer school. So I took his job, and really, from 07 till present, just been getting after it. And I've been really fortunate, too, to work with you know, great friends of mine, like Casey and Danny and Brandon and Sean, and all these boys that are just sick with this. And um, it's a lifestyle. And it's really, really fun to just be up here and do this every day and try to share the same experience that I had with, with our guides when my dad and I were up here and just blow minds. I mean, if I can provide an experience where somebody's up here fishing and their eyes get wide and they have a life-changing trip and thoroughly enjoy themselves, like, that's the mission. You know, the fish are a bonus. So it's a pretty fun place to do that in. And, we were fortunate enough to do it every day. When you hit that seam right, you know it, man. Isn't that crazy? It's like just, You just hold your rod tip at one angle and just follow it down the river. It's a beautiful one to find it. It's gonna happen soon. These fish really hang on heavy current seams. So where two currents come together, a slow current, a fast current. And for whatever reason, that's just how they're bred. They like to be in that heavy stuff. They like to be right on the edge where they can take a rest or take a break. So our goal is to find those little spots, those little seams, those currents that every single fish is coming up the river on. They're really, you know, specific to one side of the river. They're gonna come up the heaviest side. 
and they'll zigzag back and forth across the river on their way up to spawn. And we just hope to intercept them right where they're coming by. And here's a great little slot where you got slow current that we're standing in and super heavy water right there. And every single fish that's coming up here is going right by. That's fish. Yep, you're doing it. You're fine right there. There you go. That's a fish. That's a fish. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh that's a good one. Oh, I can't stop. It's a fish too. We got the drag on the 8,000 Shimano just locked down. Here it's coming up river. Wow. Talk about an adrenaline rush. He's up here now. Oh man. That's a little relief. We got him back in his pool. Wow. Whoa. 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 Wow. <laughs> this fish is going to shore. Wow. Look at that fish. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's an explosion of madness, chaos. Hang onto the rod as tight as you can. Don't let that fish go downstream. Wow, that happened so fast. What a magical start to the morning. Magical. So that's a hen. She's looking pretty good. She's not too beat up. It's been a long trip for her from the ocean. She's yeah. gone about 120 miles to get to this spot. So, and she doesn't have far to go to spawn. So that's She's incredible. Perfect shape. A big hen. Good looking fish. A big hen. I love it. That is incredible. A cold, chilly morning. We got that sun hitting the hills in front of us here and big king salmon on the river. It doesn't get much better than this. That is truly a special, special fish. Let's take a quick look at her and send her back on her way. Look at that fish. Wow, that is a giant, absolute giant hen. <laughs> Words can't really describe when you feel that bite, when you feel that fish hit. It set the hook and hang on. So much power, especially in that current out there that's going, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten miles an hour. What a fish. Let's send her on her way. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. You're all right, girl. Ready? There she goes. <laughs> that is so cool. Disappears into the blue abyss. Magic, magic. So our kings, born in the river, and they spend their first winter up here, eating what they can. Usually they feed off their parents that created them because they all die after they spawn. And they get as big and healthy as they can, and the next year they head down to the ocean. So they'll migrate down about 120 miles, down through the Copper River, down to the ocean, and then they're just eating machines. And they'll be eating for four years, five years, six years, seven years even, and then they come back. And so our biggest fish are those seven year fish. And then they make that migratory journey back up, come all the way up the copper, dip into these tributaries and come up. So we're about 120 miles up the copper here. They're pretty unique fish. Um, they're super powerful, which we've seen in the last couple days. Big one, big one, big one. Ah! Big one, big one, big one. Ah! Oh my gosh. I'm just giving it. Oh my god, to keep this fish from going down the river. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a battle. That first 15, 20 seconds is so imperative. This feels like a heavy one. This feels like a heavy one. 
There we go. That's a pretty one. That's a pretty one. Good scoop. <laughs> oh man, that one's all colored up. Yeah, that one's a little bit more uh, red than the other ones we've been catching. That's a nice fish. You'll get them in all different colors. Sometimes it'll be purple, sometimes it'll be chrome silver. Wow, man. The Mojo Inshore got put to work there. You just stick those fish as hard as you can. I set the hook on that one and that just like, it just stops. And then you feel that first or two head shakes and it's like, it's game on. And then just try your hardest not to let them run down the river. But you know, we, we stopped that one and that's a big fish. Yeah. That's a big fish there. Wow. What an animal. What an animal. What a backdrop we have here. What a river. I mean, it's just truly incredible. A big buck. You can see the hook, hook jaw on them. Cool looking fish. Very cool looking fish. Big old nose. That is so cool. Look at that jaw. Wow. Ready to go. See you later. <laughs> that is... That's about as intense and exhilarating as I think some, a lot of fishing can be. I mean, it's just, I mean, if that fish wanted to, it could just turn and just go. You just have to, with all your might, it's like all your muscles and your abs, your core, your legs, just try to prevent that fish from going down the river. And luckily we stopped that one and got him back, got him back up here, but incredible. These fish are super special. You know, it's not necessarily a numbers game. I mean, sure, there's some seasons where there's more fish. This year we have a substantial amount of fish too. I think the escapement, some we're gonna end up around 36 to 42,000 kings in the drainage. Um, but they're all unique. And so, you know, I look at it like steelhead or muskies. One is a good day. Where we are and in this river and in this basin, just the wildlife and everything you see in a normal day. You know, the number of eagles and moose, we saw a bear this morning. Um, it's super cool and we're not that far away from metropolitan life in Anchorage and uh, we're on our own little island out here it's nice and quiet there's not many companies out here there's not many anglers access is super difficult um, rivers are fast they're dangerous you know so you don't get a lot of weekenders you don't get a lot of people out here because deaths happen all the time the consequences are huge um, but it's really cool fighting one of these fish the power the strength the speed each one's different, each one's unique. Everyone seems to have a personality and uh, you know, really strive for that. It's really cool when you're connected to something that big pulling on you. And you realize the amount of power each of these fish have. To just eat for seven years, swim up the river, and then pull on you like they do. They wanna go, they wanna get away. And uh, it's a really special place. <laughs> the power these things have, man. Oh, man. He's way out there. I know. He's way out there. Look if, at that. If I go low with the rod, though, I was hitting some of that silt down there. Yeah. I was scared he was going to shave me off. Yeah, he's just going up the rapids. There he goes. He's literally going right up the rapids. Yeah. Holy cow, man. This is why we use a rod like this. Like, this is why you need power for these moments right now. That's a big fish. Yeah. That's a big fish. 
That's a nice big buck. Big healthy male. <laughs> it doesn't get any more exciting, man. Like these fish are just massive. Massive. It's incredible what they can oh, do in that heavy yeah. current. I think he just popped off. And I hooked him again. Yeah, I popped off on the gravel in there. Yeah. And somehow it still stuck him. Here you go. That's a big fish too. I knew he, because when I when he was coming across the current, hitting the shallower stuff, the line was like sticking on that yeah. silt, those silt boulders down there. It was just like dunk, and then he'd be over here 15 feet, yeah. then he'd be over there. And I swear I lost him for a second, but it caught him again. It's a big male, boys. Look at this thing. There. Wow. That's what we're looking for. That's a big fish so fun man all these fish have such unique personalities like you never know what you're gonna get some just scream drag and run on you others just sit in one spot and pull on you and a lot of these big bucks will just try to own you and break your will so the thing about this style of fishing is you need a rod that number one has a lot of backbone and power to handle these fish but number two has has sensitivity. You just can't have a big old pool cue as a, as a rod. You know, we're side drifting, as Blake mentioned, and we're just, you know, drifting a spawn sack and essentially a three-way rig down the current. You need to maintain contact with that bottom at all times. If, you're, if your bait's not on bottom, you're not gonna be getting bit. And, you know, you need to have that right drift to go in. So you need to know, you need to have that feel. You need to know what those rocks are doing, what the current's doing. You need all that information to kind of transpire and uh, you know, translate that through the sensitivity of your rod. So, you know, here we have the, the Mojo Inshore. This is a 711 heavy power. Really that 711 heavy, like it'll, if you hook a giant, a 40, 50 plus pounder, like you're gonna have the best chances at getting it in with a 711 heavy. Um, if you wanna have more fun with those 20, 30 pounders, you know, you could downsize to a, a medium heavy. Um, but by using that heavy, like if we do hook up to that, that one fish, that one big, big fish, like we got the gear to do it. You know, 80 pound braid, a size 8,000 Shimano reel, and a 711 heavy Mojo inshore rod from St. Croix. Like we're prepared for battle. Like we can handle the, the, you know, some of the bigger fish in the river. Yes, you need a lot of luck on your side to land. Even the 20, 30 pounders, you need a lot of luck on your side to land them just because there's so much current and so much variable, you know, so many variables out there and you know these fish are just so powerful it's just incredible what these fish do even a 20 pounder i mean you're just you're sore after one fish um but yeah that's just kind of a, kind of our gear you know you just you gotta be you gotta have that bait in the right place it's you know you see a big river and you think like fish could be anywhere but really like these salmon are you know just envision deer trails out there these fish swim sim very similar paths but those paths are current seams there's you know they're you really got to be dialed on where you're casting and, you know, pay attention, you know, how to read a river and, you know, main, maintain contact, let this weight drag on bottom and let this kind of float up behind it and, you know, get that in front of a, a salmon's mouth and, you know, if everything comes together, it's game on. Oh, jeepers! My goodness. That thing ate right next to the bank. Right next to the bank. Listen to that drag scream. All right, we gotta go down and follow this fish a little bit. Crazy. Pure madness. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> What's this one looking like, buddy? Looks like another hen. Oh my. Maybe gosh. not. It's fighting like a male now. You can tighten your drag. Yep, tighten it. Keep going. <sighs> She wanted to go. Oh yeah. We're not gonna let her. That is a arm workout. <laughs> arm workout, here we are. Oh, 
<laughs> nice fish, dude. <laughs> That's a shiny That's one like, there, boy. Like a bomb goes off when you net these things. Like, it is an explosion. <laughs> it's chaos. Wow. Man, the old St. Croix Mojo inshore is getting a workout. Look at that fish. Well, that one's not too red. No, that one's super shiny. She's probably only been in the system for a couple of weeks. She flew up here. You can see the silver down the scales all the way down the back. Her tail's still bright. She's got silver down on her belly still. Yeah. That's a pretty quick moving fish there, boys. What a cool fish. What a special fish. Just the power these things have to catch them out here. I mean, on the bank of the river. That's about as good of an adrenaline rush as I think you can get fishing. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. Let's get this one back. All right, girl. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. <laughs> Words can't describe it. Words cannot describe it. That is cool. So I love being up here. You know, for me, it's a super special place. It's kind of like a second family, a second home. You know, the crew, the good old boys, hanging out in camp at night, a place that we've all put years of our life into, you know, the camaraderie, the back deck conversations when we literally talk fishing for way too many hours and have to get up at two in the morning to get ready for the next day. Um, that alone, the camaraderie, the fishing's great too, but being able to do this with my buddies, um, where we're all just absolutely dialed into this river every day, is super cool. And the fish are huge. I mean, there's nothing like it. Um, getting bit by something like this, it's a dinosaur. They pull on you, and every fish is cool, but my goodness, man, the experience all combined is just life-changing. Can't stop. <laughs>